First off this morning, I have a keto chow salted caramel shake with two tablespoons of butter mixed with coffee. And here's our fresh bacon, smoked pork belly, fresh off the smoker. And we're going to slice it up and package it up. It's about 18 pounds of bacon. Okay, just finished slicing up bacon and packaging it. And these are the ends and we're gonna do pork burnt ends. All I've done is we've cubed them up and we've put a little bit more of our barbecue rub on it. You can use any barbecue rub that you want. We have our own and we will roast these in the convection oven for 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, just want to get them, get a good char on them. I'll show them when they're done. But I'm going to have some of these and I'll probably fix me some eggs for my lunch. And here's my burn ins, bacon burn ins, and I've got three fried eggs with some Redmond real salt, and this is my lunch. And this is amazing. Hi there, welcome to Life with Lori. I'm Lori. And today I am going to go over what I eat in a day. Now, my typical breakfast is. Um, two to three eggs, uh, sometimes scrambled with a little bit of cheese, sometimes fried over easy, about four to six strips of bacon or two sausage patties with uh, either, sometimes I don't have anything else to go with it. Uh, and on those days, I definitely have three or four eggs. Um, but I usually have uh, keto chow waffles that I make with keto chow. And if you don't know what keto chow is, it's a uh, ketogenic um, meal replacement uh, shake powder, but I do all kinds of things with it. I make waffles, I use it like in mug cakes, um, I make pancakes with it. And basically all I do as far as the waffles is, uh, it's four eggs, four whole large eggs, one scoop of keto chow, and about a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder and two ounces of softened cream cheese. And I mix that all together and I just make waffles out of it. Um, you may recognize that as the Two Crazy Keto's protein uh, waffles, the Keto Chow high protein uh, pancakes that they make, but I make mine waffles because it's easier for me to make them up in advance. I make huge batches put them in my freezer and uh, that way I just put them in my toaster, put butter on them, a little bit of sugar-free syrup, and I have breakfast. Um, a lot of times for lunch, I won't even eat lunch. If I do, it's like maybe a hamburger patty or maybe it's like leftovers from the night before, particularly if there's leftover steak, I'll have steak the next day um, for like lunch. And then for dinner, I usually have mostly meat. Like I'll have a, um, a ribeye steak or um, ground beef that's been seasoned, uh, you know, with maybe a little bit of onion in it or some peppers or just some like taco seasoning or um, sometimes I like just a little bit of sriracha sauce in it. Um, I typically, the only way that I really, really like chicken is wings. I like wings. Um, but unfortunately right now it's very difficult to find wings around here. So I usually have, if I have chicken, I usually take it and uh, either I will bake it or I will fry it. And the way that I do my fried chicken is that I will coat it in, I will take unflavored protein powder and I get the Nutricost brand from Amazon. I have a big container of it and I'll just take that and I will add basically the seasonings that you would typically add to your flour for like fried chicken and then I will coat my chicken in that and then I will fry it in avocado oil and 
it makes good fried chicken with a nice crunch on the outside. I have, I, t I don't really like using pork rinds as a breading. Uh, I don't like the flavor of it. So, I mean, every once in a while I will, but for the most part, and I do that with my chicken liver as well. Also, uh, and this is somewhere on this channel, there is a recipe for my chicken liver pate. That's another thing that I like to have on hand for like lunches. If you don't like liver, then maybe that's not for you. But since I have chronic anemia, liver is very important to me because it helps keep my iron levels up. Um, Another thing I like is broccoli cheese soup this time of year. This is very popular for soups and everything. And this is where a little bit, I'm a little bit more keto than carnivore. And all I do for my broccoli cheese soup is I take a, a, a package of frozen broccoli florets and I defrost it, um, you know, and just kind of make sure that it's uh, not frozen anymore. And sometimes I have to run a knife through it to chop it up a little bit more bite size. And I will just take like a stick of butter um, and melt it down. And then I add beef broth. I like using beef broth in my broccoli uh, cheese soup simply because I think it adds a little bit more of a depth of flavor than say chicken soup, you know, just chicken broth. But I like the beef broth and I really like to use homemade beef bone broth uh, when I have it. But um, I know here lately I haven't made up any beef bone broth in a while. So I've been using just, you can use like the Kettle and Fire brand. I'm cheap. I use the Great Value brand because, hey, the Kettle and Fire brand is expensive and I just use the beef broth that I get at Walmart. It's fine for me. You have to do what works for you. But I'll just use that and I'll just take about four cups of the beef broth and put it in there with uh, after I've melt down the butter. Sometimes I cook about maybe like a half of a of a medium onion. I'll dice it up and put it in there. You don't don't have to. You can you could just add like um, dehydrated onion to your beef bone broth and let it reconstitute. You know if you don't want to actually use onions. I know onions right now they've been recalled for like salmonella in some areas. So that's something you can do. You could also just use a little bit of garlic. I've put garlic in it before. Just some minced garlic works great. So after I've added the, the minced garlic, the four cups of uh, beef broth and the stick of butter, I just let that all cook together and then I will add my broccoli. And then I add an eight ounce package of cream cheese, um, usually a cup of heavy cream, and then I will add two cups of shredded cheese. And I just whisk that, just stir it constantly until it's all creamy and combined. I add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I also add just a little bit of hot sauce. Just a little bit of hot sauce. Uh, and that's my broccoli cheese soup. So sometimes I have that for dinner. If I have a dessert, it's either the keto chow ice cream that I've been making in the Ninja Foodie, but honestly, I'm not Ninja Foodie, but the Ninja Creamy. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, I've actually gotten sick of it. I've had it so much recently that I've gotten sick of it, so I am actually don't have any in the freezer ready to go. I'm leaving it alone for a little bit. I've just gotten sick of ice cream. I'm not a person that likes, I'm not a huge ice cream fan, so I've just been leaving it alone. Um, so like, desserts have basically, I'd gotten some, um, uh, Quest cookies and I like have one of those cookies like in the evenings if I want a dessert here lately I've just been drinking like coffee or a cup of hot tea um, I Don't really do any type of set schedule for intermittent fasting. I need to desperate but it can get kind of crazy because I never know what all my day is gonna hold what I'm gonna have to do so therefore sometimes uh, fasting is just not feasible especially when I have to uh, go and do stuff then I need to eat I need to fuel my body another thing is that I can't 
Like for instance, I know a lot of people in the keto community, carnivore community, they're, they're just eating one meal a day. I can't do that. I have to have at least two meals a day. I have to break it up because I can't sit there and eat um, 12, 1300 calories in one meal. Uh, and a lot of problems is that people will count calories and I'll be honest with you, counting calories is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard anybody doing and I've, I used to do it. I never did lose weight counting calories. Uh, yeah, I would lose it, but I would gain it back and it had friends. It always brought friends with it. And so, no, I don't count calories. I, as a matter of fact, I don't track anything. Uh, I think that after a while you've been on keto, you know what 20 grams of total carbs look like. Um, you know what your body can and can't handle. Now, I don't use any of the keto breads. If I do want a piece of toast, I will splurge, and I do mean splurge because it's like $9 a loaf. Um, and that's the base culture keto bread that I get from Publix. So if you don't have a Publix nearby, I think Whole Foods has it. Um, I don't know about any of the other, you know, grocery stores, but it's called base culture. It's expensive, but it has a bread like consistency. It tastes like bread. You know, it's like, it's just not, it's not my favorite. Uh, I have never had the protein spirit. I haven't had the egg white bread. I'm sorry. It's just egg whites. It's egg whites and cream of tartar. Uh, that's not, you know, it's, it's protein powder. That is not bread, okay? <laughs> My background is in culinary arts. I know what bread is, okay? Bread is made from wheat and yeast and a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, some type of a fat source. I know what bread is. That is not bread. That is one thing that I wish they would, you know, just say bread alternative. It is not bread, okay? Bread is made from wheat. You know, it's not, it's, it's flour based. So yeah, that's just a, it's just a little pet peeve of mine, you know, and hey, it's, it's opinion. Okay. It's just my opinion. All right. So don't go hating on my terminology. It's just that if I want eggs, I will fix eggs in a form that I actually would like just eating egg whites. I, that's just something that doesn't appeal to me. And hey, I'm not knocking it. I just, I don't see how that could even come close because I mean, you know, look, I'm a bread addict. Let me tell you, I love some bread, but I just don't see, because even chaffles, and I like chaffles. Chaffles are just egg and cheese. I like chaffles, but that's not bread. I have used it as a bread alternative. However, there is no such thing as a, uh, a bread one-to-one -one alternative. You know, nothing keto is going to make anything taste like actual bread. If you're staying like clean ingredient, no wheat, no sugar type, you know, no gluten, that form of keto. If you're doing keto where you can have like the zero carb breads that are not really zero carbs, but that's splitting hairs. I'm not going to fight with anybody, but if it if you're if you're one of those that can eat the zero carb bread and not have a reaction to it like I do then hey more power to you I just can't do it have I ever had it yes I've had it I just it makes my eczema right here I have eczema right there on this hand only and on this arm and anytime that I have any type of gluten or flour, wheat, it, it, it breaks out. So I can tell. So if somebody tries to give me something and if it, uh, if it has wheat or gluten in it, it, it tells, it's a tattletale. <laughs> it, it, it lets me know, Hey, you weren't supposed to eat this. Um, as far as like pasta, uh, alternatives like the miracle noodles or the, um, palmini noodles, I have tried the palmini noodles. I didn't like them. Uh, you have to boil them for 15 minutes, then you have to rinse them really well, and then you put your sauce on them. I don't like it. I've gotten where I don't even like pasta, and that's saying something because I used to love pasta. But um, I have had traditional pasta since then, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't enjoy it. It just wasn't even good to me, and that's saying something. So, hey, I mean, at least I did kick that habit. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, 
I took a little bit of video of um, like, cause I had, I rarely have a keto chow shake anymore. Most of the time I use keto chow to cook with or bake with. I generally do not have a keto chow shake anymore. However, yesterday morning, I fixed myself a keto chow shake. And what I did was I had 14 ounces of brewed coffee and a scoop of salted caramel keto chow and about anywhere from two to three tablespoons of butter. And I just put it in my Ninja blender and blended it and drank it. It was hot, it was delicious, it was like a like a salted caramel uh, latte. And that was my breakfast yesterday morning. Uh, for lunch, I had the, um, we made bacon yesterday morning. And so what I did is I took the pork belly, uh, well, my husband, he chopped it up into cubes. Uh, and this was smoked pork belly. I just put some of our barbecue rub on it, uh, put it in the oven on the convection oven setting for at 400 degrees for, it took about 30 minutes to get it to where it needed to be. It's about 30 minutes. And I just had a big plate of, of that with three fried eggs. And um, that was my lunch. And then last night we had what we call pumpkins on the square here in town. And it's a community wide uh, trick or treat event where everybody sets up around the square and gives out candy. And so um, I volunteered to do that for uh, the church that we go to. And so me and my husband and my youngest son, we did that. We handed out candy from, well, it wasn't supposed to start till six, but people started coming around at about 5.45 and I'm not going, if a, if a child says trick or treat, I am not going to say, no, you have to wait 15 more minutes to get your candy. So I went ahead and gave out some candy. Had I waited, we might not have run out at 7.15 last night and it was supposed to be from six to eight. So we ran out at 7.15 and came home because I had to stand up the entire time. So my legs and my feet were hurting because it's concrete and I'm not used to um, standing on really hard surfaces for that long period of time without being able to sit down when I need to. And I couldn't sit down last night because of where my chair was at and I was sort of blocked from my chair, from the booth next to us. But, you know, that's okay. I enjoyed seeing all the kids and everything. Enjoyed handing out candy. I did not indulge in any candy last night. Um, so that's, and, and I was handing out the good stuff too. Milky Ways, Twix bars. And yeah, no, I didn't have any. But basically that's what I eat in a day. Um, so, uh, pork rinds are a great snack. Uh, I also get the Duke's uh, sugar-free uh, meat sticks from Costco. I do like those. You can find Chomps meat sticks usually in like where the gluten-free stuff is at your local Walmart. I buy those sometimes. Um, there was some meat stick. I, I can't think. I think it was the fatty meat stick that I got in the Keto Palooza bag that I ended up throwing away most of the stuff out of, but the meat stick, it was like a jalapeno meat stick. I want to order some of them. Those were delicious. Um, and there's no Whole Foods around here. So um, the closest Whole Foods is about an hour and a half away. Um, so, I mean, the next time I go up to Costco's, which is also about an hour and a half away, I might go by Whole Foods and see if they have those meat sticks because those were really good. Um, so yeah, meat sticks, pork rinds, uh, that's really good to have around. Um, if you can tolerate cheese, uh, cheese is good, a good snack to have around if you're, if you're a snack person. I try to eat um, as much as I can at my meals. That way I'm not snacking. Um, I want to do the beef, butter, bacon, egg challenge again i want to make another attempt but i think i'm just going to wait until january to do it because um yeah that's not going to happen during the holidays nope not even close <laughs>
Now, I will say, and, and this is something else that you have to decide for yourself. Now, I've lost like 121 pounds. Well, not anymore because I've actually put on a few pounds. A lot of it is inflammation uh, from, um, I've had like a, little, a few dirty keto things. And when I say dirty keto, I just mean the ingredients weren't that great. And anytime I have soy, anything with soy in it, um, my I tend to retain fluid. So I have a lot of fluid on me right now. My hands are kind of puffy and my ankles are puffy today. Um, but uh, again, you, you have to decide what works, works best for you. I have, as far as like weight loss and everything, I'm not so much doing keto or carnivore for weight loss anymore. I mean, yeah, of course I would love to lose a little bit more weight but I'm down to a size where I'm, I'm happy. I'm not, um, it's helped my self image, put it that way. My self esteem. I don't feel like a humongous blob anymore. Uh, I just feel overweight and I can deal with that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I would love to lose a few more pounds, but the thing is that I mostly do keto and carnivore for, uh, to get my inflammation down as low as possible. Uh, that's the reason why I follow a ketogenic way of eating because keto carnivore is not really a weight loss diet. Uh, you can lose weight on it. A lot of people do lose weight on it, but it is mainly to rid your body from inflammation. It helps with a lot of different health issues and at least that's what I do it for. Um, what do I drink during the day? Okay, well, I, I'm a coffee addict, and that is one vice that is never going to go away. Uh, I have cut back a lot on my coffee, and I usually um, have two 16-ounce cups of coffee, or two, I'm sorry, about 24 to 36 ounces of coffee a day. And so what I do is I fill up my cup. Uh, I have a, about 12 ounces of coffee, one tablespoon of uh, preferred keto collagen, the salted caramel collagen, and sometimes I put in about a tablespoon of heavy cream. That's it. And I put um, my daily minerals in my coffee, my first cup of coffee every morning. And then my second cup of coffee, I just leave the daily minerals out. And uh, I've been drinking uh, the Redmond Relight, um, the strawberry lemonade with water. I've been drinking a lot of that. As a matter of fact, I'm down to about a half a canister. I actually need to order more. That's my favorite electrolytes. Um, I also have some of the Redmond Relight capsules, the Hydration Plus ones that I will be taking if I run out of the powder. But um, I prefer to drink my electrolytes rather than take them in a pill form, simply because you know sometimes you get sick of water. Um, every once in a while, I'll get like a Sprite Zero or um, a. Um, like a lemon lime uh, soda beverage, you know, but it's zero sugar. But I try to leave those alone. Uh, I like the bubbly water, the sparkling water. I like those okay. Um, the aha, the blueberry pomegranate is okay. But again, me and carbonation, we don't get along so well. The sparkling waters, you know, they're carbonated. So sometimes they can make me retain fluid too. I can get puffy with that too. So I have to be careful with a lot of carbonation. Um, so it's mainly water and coffee. Every once in a while, maybe on some unsweetened iced tea, uh, which is funny because being an Alabama girl, um, you know, we don't trust people that don't drink sweet tea, you know, <laughs> I'm just joking. No, but I just, I generally drink unsweetened tea and, and that's mostly if I go out somewhere and everybody else is having uh, sweet tea, I have unsweetened tea. Uh, and but there's plenty of times where I just order coffee. Uh, I'm like my dad. He could drink coffee all day long, and I have drank coffee all day long. I can drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep. Uh, it has no effect on me. Now espresso, mm, that's a whole other thing. I have recently found the Bang drinks. You know the sugar-free Bang drinks, um, like energy, carbonated energy. I don't like how sweet they are. Now, they don't have any sugar in them, but the sweetener, it's very, very strong. So if you're sensitive to sweetness, I would suggest um, pouring them over ice. 
because they are quite sweet tasting to me. However, say, you know, I only have one or two cups of coffee in the morning and I'm gonna be out and, well, the closest Starbucks to us is like 45 minutes away. And frankly, we had to wait 30 minutes to get our coffees the other day when we went. I'm not going back to that Starbucks. Um, and our local coffee shop that had just opened decided to close. So we are without a coffee shop here in, you know, town again. So it's basically just, uh, sometimes if I'm out, uh, I know that our Walmart, our local Walmart has the bang drinks up where they have like the Pepsi and Coke products. Um, the wild and watermelon is really good. The pina colada flavor is also very, very good. I was actually surprised as that it was as good as it was, but that's just, very seldom it's not something that I want to get in the habit of drinking on a regular basis. I've never been an energy drink person anyway. My kids are, but me, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not drinking, I don't drink coffee for the, ca the, the, the coffee for the caffeine. I drink coffee because I like the taste. Okay, I drink it for the caffeine, but I drink it so that I don't end up on snapped. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I have to have my coffee. So, but yeah, I, I'm one of these people that I can drink plain water. It doesn't bother me. Um, I drink bottled water and it's nothing, spect it's no fancy water. I'm not drinking Avion or the smart water. I mean, yeah, I like the, the Fiji water. I love that, uh, especially when it's real cold. Uh, it's real good, but for the most part, it's just bottled water with Redmond Relight in it. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get Zip Fizz, but the Redmond Relight is its just better. Uh, it's higher quality, in my opinion, as far as electrolytes goes. It's got enough sodium in it, enough magnesium, and enough uh, potassium so that I don't have to, I, well, I supplement with magnesium anyway, but I don't have to take a potassium pill at night. If I have, if I use the Redmond Relight and if I have two to three servings, two or three scoops in, you know, bottled water um, every day, I don't have to supplement with potassium or uh, worry about, um, you know, having to take something else for leg cramps at night because I am prone to get them. Okay, I've rambled on long enough. So, uh, yeah, that's what I eat in a day, what I consume in a day. On average, I've, you know, tried to give some ideas. Uh, I do not meal plan. That's just, I can't do it. It Having six people in this house, you know, all the time, it's, it's impossible to meal plan. And if you can meal plan with six or more people in the house, then you, you are my hero. Um, but I just can't do it. It's very difficult to do. We have different tastes. We have different likes, you know, and, um, I am only the only one that really tries to follow keto, um, in the family. So sometimes that can be a process when you're trying to cook non-keto foods on top of keto foods. But for the most part, everybody eats whatever I prepare. And if not, this is not Burger King. You cannot have it your way. So I will see you on the next one. And don't forget, stop making excuses and start making progress.